Hi, my name is Sarah. I am uh, 28 from West Virginia and I was just in the shower um, obviously and I decided that I wanted to try making a video. I've never made one before. I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish with this. I don't even think I'm honestly doing this to try to accomplish anything. I just, I guess there's just so much stuff built up in here. Not just in here, but everywhere that I kind of want it out. And if somebody just happens across this video or any other ones I make in the future and it can help them, then I guess that's the best accomplishment. Not even if it helps them, but uh, maybe you can relate or whatever. <laughs> But, I guess what's really on my mind tonight would be, uh, I don't know, I've just kind of been down um, since yesterday a bit. We just got a really bad, well, I mean not a really bad snowstorm or ice storm, but for West Virginia, my area, it pretty decently bad. We got it, what is today? Today's Friday. We got it, <laughs> we got it Wednesday night. And, um, I personally can't tolerate the cold. Um, I actually suffer with a disease called Hashimoto's, which is a autoimmune disease that affects your thyroid and what it is is your body is literally destroying your own thyroid gland and stuff so it affects everything from my hair hair loss hair growth to weight gain weight loss mood swings um, tolerance to the weather heat cold um, because a lot of people, um, I'd be like, oh, well, hopefully you stay warm, and they're like, oh, it's not even that bad out, and it could be 40 degrees, but to me, if I went outside, I'd have to wear a long sleeve shirt, a hoodie, um, uh, my Carhartt vest, and a jacket, and I'd still be freezing, and that's no joke, but... So, like I said, I've just been kind of down since yesterday. Uh, the weather honestly doesn't help. Um, but it also doesn't help that uh, I started talking to a, a local guy. kind of like him. Um, and he was texting me for a good bit yesterday. And then out of nowhere, he just kind of disappeared out of nowhere. didn't hear from him all night um normally he since we've been talking he would text me in the mornings and stuff but he hasn't he didn't text me this morning first like normal so that uh added in on top of um not helping i guess my mentality my emotions whatever um i don't mean to say i'm a lot because when i was in high school I know my English teacher, uh, her, she always told us whenever we had to do speeches or get up in front of the class and talk, to never say, um, it's not very classy. I try not to say, um, a whole lot, but sometimes I just can't find the words up here, so I need a second or... But, um, <laughs> there I went again. But, I've actually only been single s since the first week of January or something like that. Um, I left my recent ex because I, it honestly 
wasn't a healthy relationship. It, it really wasn't. It's not like he was a bad guy. He just... I don't know how to explain it. He's nice. But... He had a lot of stuff that he still needed to learn and he needed to work out. Because like I said, I'm 28. Next month I'm turning 29. He was only 24. And... Uh, I know somebody messaged me the other day on Facebook and asked what happened between me and him. And I told them, well, it honestly wasn't good. And they said, oh, I never knew that because, you know, everything that seen you post on Facebook seemed like it was going good. Well, because that's the type of person I am. I, I'm going to hide it. You know, what's going on behind doors, I'm going to try to face it. And I, I did seek some professional help to try to figure out what to do and what not. But I do know it just, it wasn't healthy. Literally, the beginning of our relationship was really good. And the longer that we was together, the worse it got. I honestly... When I'd wake up in the mornings, I'd be like, oh, great. What's today going to fucking bring? What's he going to accuse me of doing now? What's he just going to get mad about for no fucking reason? Because there would be days that he... He would call me while he was at work or something sometimes. He always called me when he was on his way home from work. And I play a lot of games on my phone. Um... And I'd always get notifications, and I'd get notifications while we'd be on the phone, and he'd be like, oh, who's that texting you? No, oh, who's that messaging you? No one. It's a game notification. No, it's not. That's a, that's a message notification. I'd tell him, no, it's not. It's a game notification. I would know. I'm looking at my phone. I literally have my phone in my hand. I'm the one looking at it. I know what it says. And I understand that there's there's a lot of liars out there nowadays. Um, anybody that really knows me will tell you I am straight, bluntly honest. So much to the point to where it sounds like I'm just saying stuff to be mean and be a bitch. But that's really not the case. But anyway, he would tell me that I was getting text messages when I really wasn't and stuff like that. And it got to the point to where I literally fantasized about getting in an octagon with him and fighting him. And once I realized that, I was like, that's, that's not healthy. That's... Yes, I understand that when you've been together for like 10, 15 years, there's sometimes you're going to fantasize about punching your partner in the face. But it's different when you've only been together for six months and you fantasize about getting in a UFC ring with them and basically <laughs> repeatedly punching them in the face until you break their nose or some shit. That's not healthy. It's really not. I mean... Like I said, it's not like he was mean. He didn't abuse me or anything like that. But when we would get in arguments and stuff, and in all honesty, I... I don't open up to a whole lot of people. Because... You never know what you tell somebody, what they're going to do with it. But he, I mean, he tried to throw some of the stuff I told him up in my face, bring it back, throw it at me. And never once did any of the stuff that he told me, did, never once when I got mad at him or we got in a fight, did I bring that up and throw it in his face. But anything I told him got brought up and thrown in my face. Anytime that I was mad or upset and I wanted space, I work all day. 
You get your space. You're alone while I work all day. And the only time I see you is when I get off work and on the weekends. So you got plenty of time to yourself. That's not the exact words that he said, but that's pretty close to the exact words that he would say. And I would tell him, go hang out with somebody. Go do something on your own. Yes, I want to see you and stuff, but we constantly don't have to be up each other's asses. But it wasn't just stuff like that. I got accused of cheating. So in October, I got so fed up with getting accused of cheating that I left him. I left him for a whole week thinking, okay, since I left, maybe he would understand what he's doing that's not right. He had the password to my phone. I did not log out of Facebook. I did not log out of Facebook Messenger. So anytime that he would want on my phone, he could just grab a hold of my phone, enter my password, and open up Facebook, Facebook Messenger, and my text messages and see absolutely anything and everything. And I let him do it too. So much so that I guess what really started the whole October thing was we went to Applebee's one day and I have been looking for somebody to remodel my shower here in the house and a male that is on my friends list on Facebook messaged me while we was at dinner saying, hey, I'm no longer in West Virginia, but my brother has a company up in West Virginia and he does house remodels and stuff. I could give him a message and ask him to come give you a quote, blah, 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 blah. I originally wasn't even going to tell him that he messaged me and I was like, hey, this friend of mine on Facebook messaged me telling me that their brother could give me a quote on the shower model. And he was like, okay. And I told him, well, uh, I messaged a kid that I went to high school with. Turns out him and his father does remodeling and stuff like that. Um, I will give him a shot. Uh, but if the kid I went to high school with can't give me a quote and stuff like that, then I'll keep your brother in mind. Okay. That's where it all started. Because when I said, I will keep your brother in mind... The person who sent me that message heart reacted to my message where I said, I will keep your brother in mind. And that sent my ex off. Why did he heart react it? That's not right. And I said, he probably heart reacted it because I said that I would keep his brother in mind. But I'm still willing to give his brother a chance to give me a shower model quote and for me to give him my business. My ex literally got on my messenger and messaged that guy. There and then I got thinking, okay, that's, that's not healthy. That's a side of him I didn't know was there and that's not good. So I guess that's where it all started and it all started going downhill. So after that, I think it was a week or two later, that's when I broke up with him. Because it just progressively got worse and worse. And we literally had to drive up to basically St. Clairsville, Ohio to return his dad's truck. Because his dad loaned him his truck while his was in the shop. So we was driving up to St. Clairsville and he called me. And said, you was just on Facebook. Who are you talking to? And I said, the Texas game's about to come on. I made a post about it. He said, no, you're talking to somebody. I said, no, you can literally get on Facebook and see that I made a post about the Texas game. He said, no, you're cheating on me. You are cheating on me. And I said, no. Because I can't tell you how many times I tried to explain to him. If you're on Facebook, it will show on Messenger that you are active. You don't actually have to be on Messenger for Messenger to say you're active. As long as you're even on Facebook, it will say you're active. 
So, we got in a big fight there. And it wasn't that night when we got home. I think it was the next night. I told him, I was like, I'm done. And it did work uh, a little bit. My terms and conditions was that he would go see a therapist. And it wouldn't be one session. It would be at least three. So he went to one session. And I could just see... I could see a light switch flip, like, turn on completely different after he sat down and talked to somebody. Well, that didn't last long because he didn't want to go see a therapist. He w had the macho man mentality of, if I see a therapist, then I'm broken and I'm not going to be a man. But for some reason, he had this childish thought that since his insurance would be billed, then his place of employment would see that he's seeing a therapist and they would think that he's crazy and he would lose his job. And like I said, I guess that was just a childish mentality in him. But I tried. I tried and tried to get him to see a therapist. So... Fast forward to Thanksgiving, the week after Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving weekend, we went on a trip to the mountains of West Virginia, so we went to Elkins, uh, to Spruce Knob, Scenic Rocks, Cass Scenic Railroad, stuff like that. We wasn't even home a week, and I got a message on Facebook Messenger in my message request from some guy I didn't know, and it was screenshots and it was screenshots between my recent ex and his ex before me this this female that the whole time we was together he called a hoe a whore a bitch said that she used him for his money that she basically used him as a piggy bank she didn't work that she cheated on him all this shit it was messages between him and her talking about working stuff out and getting back together. In the messages, he said that he did miss her and he would be willing to work stuff out with her, but things had to change on her end. Well, I got the messages and I drove down to his mother's house and I raised all sorts of hell. Because this whole entire time that he constantly accused me of cheating and stuff. And then he went behind my back and did that. Well, I decided, okay, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll try to work through this. Blah, 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 blah. Well, the accusations of cheating got way worse after that. It went from, I'm pretty sure you're cheating, to you're deleting messages, you're hiding messages, you're archiving messages, you're fucking somebody else. There's someone else. And no matter how much I showed to him and I proved to him that there wasn't, it wasn't enough to convince him. I literally told him straight to his face one day, if... I was talking to somebody else and I was completely done with you. I would leave the messages on my messenger for you to find so you could leave me. I also literally told him straight to his face one night that I couldn't even deal with his own bullshit. There was no way I was going to go behind my own back making sure that I did everything correctly. To hide a whole completely another person from him. Like, I really couldn't deal with his own drama. Let alone, there would be no way that I could put up with hiding a whole other person. I mentally could not have done it. I mentally couldn't, I mentally couldn't even finish our relationship. Because I left him... I know it was the first week of January, 
I don't I think it was like January 4th or something like that I just couldn't do it no more I just couldn't do it no more in all honesty I told him the very first day I I met him that my dogs would always come before him that my dogs were the number one priority in my life and that never sat right with him from day one and after I found out that that statement upset him and he the way he treated my dogs and my animals because I've always been a firm believer in how somebody treats animals is a big character is a big sign of their character and I literally one day was in my room and I looked down at my male German Shepherd his name's Ranger and I said Ranger why am I with somebody who absolutely cannot stand you and hates you why because I definitely want a man that they look at my dogs like my kids as well they're like hey Let's go take the dogs to the park or hey, let's go take the dogs to do this. Never, never got that from my ex. But I know at one point I was really questioning myself whether or not things in my relationship were as bad as I thought they was. And I knew they was, but it was just, I guess, him in my head making me feel like it wasn't that bad. That maybe I, like, I, I'm not going to say he was 100% the problem. He was at least 85%. There was points to where I did yell. Like, I probably screamed until I was red in the face. Because I'm the type of person that if I feel like I'm not being heard or I'm not being understood, I will get loud. And I'm already a naturally loud person anyway to begin with. So, but I don't enjoy arguing. I don't enjoy yelling. But ladies, if you... If your relationship makes you question your sanity, they do something that you know is wrong, but you're like, maybe it's really not that wrong, or I'm wrong and I'm just overreacting to it, you need to get out of that. Because that's, it's not right. It's not right. Every relationship will have arguments. But if you ever get to the point where you literally fantasize about getting in an octagon with your partner, that's not healthy. You need to leave it. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't know what I'm trying to accomplish with this. There might be more videos to come because I, I have a lot built up. I've been through a lot of shit in my 28 years of life. Uh, I do, well, I did see a trauma therapist. I haven't seen her in a while. I haven't heard from her. So, YouTube might be my new vent station. I don't know. Um, I guess, have a good night. Try to stay warm.